welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. It's got a 99 Chevy Tahoe. It's having some problems with the power door locks. Uh, apparently the passenger front door will intermittently not work. Uh, currently it is working. Uh, so we're going to have to kind of maybe check into that, see if we can get it to not work or find out what's going on there. And then the problem that is happening currently is the rear door. So it's got the barn door style rear hatch that won't lock or unlock. So let's check that out. not lock it. So on these rear hatch systems on these or these rear door systems they don't have your uh, normal flex joint like you would see like on a door you know the rubber joint they use these uh, contact buttons up here and then it also has a corresponding contact plate on the door and there's one on that door also I don't I don't know if that one's just for the door jar switch but these ones over here you're gonna have your door jar and then you know lock unlock all that business. Uh, so I grabbed this a wire diagram we can see here at the bottom we've got our, our rear cargo door lock actuator for the cargo style doors uh, and then it goes to pin A and B which I'm not really sure which are which but it would be two of them that are close to each other I grabbed us our high amp test light we're going to make sure that we have actual power and ground you know coming back here that's receiving the supply signal now I see on this contact plate uh, these have been cleaned off I do see a little bit of green crusties going on over here so I got our key fob here. We're going to go with the top two. Maybe that's A and B. Nope. Try the bottom two. Oh, there we go. Now she breaks. So that's lock. That's unlock. Lock. Unlock. All right. So I just shortcut the process quite a bit. Uh, and that's a four amp light. So it obviously can carry current. So we know we're good up into the jam here. Now we just got to check it on this side, which I think before we even pull the door panel off, we'll, uh, there's a couple screws here, like I said, I'll show you, there's a lot, of, a lot of green pus. So that's that lower contact, and it was these two that were the uh, power and ground for the lock, so we'll have to pull that off. Got a couple screws in it, looks like. We'll see what it looks like behind it. That big door check doesn't work, so you got to kind of hold it with your knee. It's just the residual coming from the outside, I don't know. Seems to be the most logical spot to start. If everything looks good here, then we'll uh, pop the door panel off and make sure the power is making it down to the uh, actuator. A couple wires here. There she is. Should be just a solid, yeah, those are just a solid straight through connection. So I doubt that connection's open. We'll just check this real quick for continuity through it. But yeah, it's not like a printed circuit board or anything. You can see that these are actually just, you know, full metal inserts and they go through right back into the mal half on the back side. So even though it is crusty, I doubt that we're gonna find any kind of uh, open there. I suppose what we can do too is uh, see if this is continuous. These lower two tan and gray, right? You know what they told us? Tan and gray. The wire color matches. Might be pulling the door panel. All right. So we'll use. Uh, we'll just grab the old power prober here. A little short on cord. All right. So we will hook up to the bottom one here. And this little guy probe in there. All right, it says it's continuous, but can it carry current? Yep, blows the breaker. That's the fastest way to tell on these. Come on. All right, do this one. Yep, I can blow the breaker. Listen to that noisy thing for a minute. So that means our contact pad is good and can carry current. So I think this has a 15 amp breaker or something on it. You wouldn't want to do that on a printed circuit board. So what we'll do now, come up 
up here and see if our motor is continuous. I'm going to have to go get a probe. We got there a little flat. Let me go grab a couple probes and come into there a little easier. See if we hear the door lock actuator, which I don't assume we will because we're good up to and past this point. I don't hear anything. It does show uh, that it has continuity through the uh, lock motor. I hear a real, real faint clicking inside the door. Switch this around, go the other way with it. Might just be seized up or something. I don't hear any clicking in that direction. Swap them back around. So we're just sending the power and ground to it, is all. There's a real faint clicking going on inside the door. All right. Well, we done what we can without pulling the door panel. So we'll just yank the door panel off. Hopefully without breaking any plastic and some screws. Let's see what we got. I hate touching these older cars. Plastic on these things are super brittle. This thing got a lot of miles on it too. 250 something, kind of surprised. I think he's on his second engine, third transmission, something like that. Not surprised about that either. <laughs> No casualties. Get the old vapor barrier off here. Look like anybody's ever been in here. It's kind of hard to get off without stretching it.
Well, actually, it lives down here. Just going to unhook the actual mechanical rod from it. That seems to move kind of difficult. Actuator seems kind of difficult too. We'll see. Uh, we'll supply a power ground to that again. See if it actually moves. That's going to be this little guy here. Here's the mechanical rod. And that's the actuator. Let me uh, probably put a bungee or something on the door keep the thing open. And my butt's all wet. Alright, let's see here. Make sure we're probing the right one and not the rear window here. Let's see here. but it moves awful slow. Yeah. Yeah, it must have been the last time she's gonna move. It feels like it's physically seized up. Yeah, I'll try to run it the other way. Yep. Not doing anything at this point. Flip back around there. Probe switch around. All right, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like it's phys physically broken. We'll just make sure we've got the uh, ability to carry current down there and call it. Connector is kind of nasty. There's some foam in there. It's kind of gross to get to. I don't want these to short, so I'm just going to come in the back side of this harness. So, now, so we got our bulb in there now. Uh, like I said, this should carry four amps. That's going to be plenty. You know, plenty of current to tell if our circuit's good. Get our uh, knee wedge in here. We'll get our power probe hooked back up. It don't matter what direction we go at this point. Whoa! Lost ya. Doesn't matter what direction we go. We just need to be able to make sure that both wires are good. And doing this will tell us so. We're hooked up. Bulb is nice and bright. We need an actuator. Gravy. Easy diagnosis. All right, let's see if any of them are available. A mess. They're not going to happen today, folks. Um, unfortunately, the only one that we can get for today is a Dorman. You guys know how that'll end. I wound up doing it twice. Uh, GM actually has one in stock, but I've already missed delivery for today because it's almost lunchtime. So it will be here tomorrow uh, afternoon. So we'll put it in then. Looks pretty easy. I think it's only two rivets that hold it in. Oh, man, it keeps that water. And then uh, obviously put the door panel back on. So. Yep, I guess that's it. Nothing more to say. Let's wait till tomorrow. And it's tomorrow, just like that. Seconds later, when we've got our new actuator from Chevy. And this is how you know it's GM because it's made of medical. Genuine apple pie, baseballs, enchiladas. Here, set directions, instructions. Note the orientation, reuse the bracket, whatnot, and what have you. So here she is. <laughs> Looking kind of rough for an OEM unit, ain't it? A little rubber's kind of all waffled up there. More like a dormant. But, assembled in Mexico. It's kind of kind of crude. Anyhow, at least this one moves nice and smooth. Uh, probably can take it. Got the keys out here. We got the keys right here. 
plug it in. We should be able to see if it works right here. Oh, and now with the door open, you big dummy. Who am I for? Well, we can close this door and open this door. Oops. That's what we'll do. I'll do my safety straps. I think the next thing's open. Now we can do it. Close enough to get uh, contacts here. Fun. Well, we made the right call, right? We knew we did. But it looks like this thing is held on with a couple of, a couple of rivets. And then must be it has uh, must be it has some nuts and bolts. We're gonna have to get some nuts and bolts that goes through the bracket or perhaps it uses the two that are already there. Can't really tell until we take it out. So let's grind these rivets off and get this little guy out of here. center through now. center gun will touch them up a little bit more. people are going to ask why we don't drill them so the problem is when you attempt to drill them you know once the steel core is gone all they do is just spin around you know so we try to just grind the steel center out and just knock the outside off now we'll be able to just knock it through like the big giant window regulator rivets. Boom! And there we have it. So I just had to finish touching those up with the grinder there. Should be able to, should be able to tap them straight through now. Back side of the rivets. There, there's those little guys. They're kind of tricky to get off, especially with the, the steel center in them. You can try to drill them, but usually they just they just spin. All right, looks like the same little guy. Rubber boots a little nicer on this one. Maybe I'll just swap this out now. So 
make sure the back of this ain't going to fall apart with no screws in it because we've got to take the screws out of this one in order to put the bracket on. Hopefully it's the same in the sense that it doesn't fall apart. screws to drive somebody crazy. In case you're asking. Because you know it will. It'll make somebody nuts, but watch this. Boom. Fourth screw, look at that. It's going to be stronger than it was OEM. Perhaps. Is there an opening? Yeah, there is. I want to make sure. Look at that. Just like new. Torque to spec. Ready to go. thing you can have when popping these big quarter inch rivets. Oh, I can't even hook up an air hose. There. I suppose you could probably use, you know, like a little carriage bolt or something in here if you wanted to. But popping these rivets by hand sucks. Makes easy work out of it. I'll probably lube up that mechanism a little bit. We'll hit her with a little Crown T40 here. Keep it from getting all rusty. See if it works. Let's see. Yeah, it's already locked. Beautiful. We got it. We won. fixing the door lock in the back of your tie hole. Uh, like I say, we just came here to check to make sure we were receiving the signal, the power ground, which we were. So that eliminated the whole front half of the car. No need to check fuses, relays, switches, none of that monkey business. If you didn't have power back here, you know, now you're, you're moving your way forward. I would assume that this would probably be the most failure prone spot, you know, next to a, you know, a relay or a blown fuse or, you know, a switch. It'd probably be, well, I guess it's going to have to depend on how the system's broke. What's the easiest thing to get to? That's eh, pretty easy. You know, maybe relays and stuff are too. Uh, at any rate, this was just a worn out actuator. This looks like the OG, man. Feels like it just mechanically jammed too. Don't know. The new one though. 
Yeah, it's definitely bound up. Yeah, a little too much cheese. But uh, at any rate, hope you learned a little something. I know this is kind of a simple diagnosis. Uh, we did get to use some big honky rivets in our Astro. Hang on, there you are. Our PR14 pop rivet gun, which I don't use a lot, but when I got to do them big jabroni, you know, window regulators, this is the only way to fly. Like I said, I've got a hand rivet gun, but it's about four foot long, and you know, it's kind of a pain in the neck to use. That just snaps them quick. So uh, I'll put links to that in the description. People are going to ask about my little uh, my little two inch angle grinder. I don't know who makes it. This one's Mac. You know, obviously they don't make their own tools. I don't know if it's you know an IR or whose it is. Um, but this is a handy little sucker too. Again, you know, not something you use a lot, but uh, pretty handy when you need it. Quite powerful too. The little discs are kind of spendy, but when you don't use it a lot, it don't matter. Nothing more I can say. Check us out on our socials. Find us on Patreon. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.